Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash, live back in England. Jacob, one of the believers uh, asked the question, we've been talking about pre-trib a lot lately, and uh, the gentleman said, Dear Jacob, thank you for what you're teaching in our Pazzo about intraseal. I'm more pre-wrath. But I have many friends who are pre-tribbers who would state they do not believe in Darby and Schofield. How could you be a pre-tribber and not believe in Darby and Schofield? What they would have to do is to make an argument based solely on exegesis from the New Testament. Now, it would be pretty hard to get around the plain wording of the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24. I'll read it. See to it that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and mislead many. You'll be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See, you're not frightened. Those things must take place, but the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Okay. First phase of the seven years is the beginning of birth pangs. Then they will deliver you to tribulation and kill you. And you'll be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end shall be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. Then the end will come. But when you see the abomination of desolations, exactly meeting 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, sets up the image in the temple which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Whoever is on the housetop must not go down to get the things that are in his house. Whoever is in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. Now again, these things have a double meaning because they partially apply to the events of 70 AD. But let's continue. But pray that your flight will not be in winter, there will be a great tribulation such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will unless those days have been cut short, kolobo, amputated in Greek, no life would be saved, but for the sake of the elect those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, behold, here is the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. False Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders as if possible to mislead even the elect. I told you in advance. So if they say to you, behold, he's in the wilderness, don't go there. Behold, he's in the inner rooms, don't believe them, for as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so their coming of the Son of Man will be. Wherever the corpse is there, the vultures will gather. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, that does not mean the end of the seven years. The seven years is not the, the entire tribulation is not the seven years. It's a section. Beginning of birth pangs, the great tribulation, then the day of the Lord, the day of his wrath. The sun will be darkened, the moon not give its light, Joel's prophecies, and the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the earth will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. He'll send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end to the other. Now Jesus said directly, he's talking to his apostles, 
what's going to happen to believers. There'll be a tribulation, a great tribulation, and then there'll be a rapture. That's what it says literally. Darby said, oh, that's talking about unsaved Jews. What Jesus said is elaborated upon by Paul in 2 Thessalonians. He makes the same thing clear. He says, We request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord and our gathering together to him, episunagage, that's the rapture and resurrection together, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you. It will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. There will be a falling away and a revelation of the identity of the Antichrist. The son of destruction, of perdition, or the man of sin, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself to be God. Same as what Jesus said when you see the abomination of desolations. We have to see this happen. Now to get around this, John Nelson Darby did his hatchet job with his Marcionite hermeneutics. You need to find some way to explain these passages. If somebody says they don't believe in Darby but they still believe in pre-trib, then how do they explain these literal passages? How do they get around them? Okay, you don't believe in Darby. His explanation was, it's not for the church, it's for Jews. What's your explanation? That is the answer. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book, and the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.